three of America's most eligible bachelors, Joe, Gavin, and George Malou. They may seem like regular guys, but these brothers are billionaires. Bad day of golf is better than a good day at the office. <laughs> good shot. And when they're not partying like rock stars, they're hanging with them. They not only live like kings, they own them. The Sacramento Kings, that is. It's a bachelor life of privilege that makes men green with envy and women flush with fantasies about snagging this Joe billionaire or his brothers. But if you think they're just a bunch of spoiled rich kids coasting on a trust fund, think again. No, you put the El Pinto uh, kiosk out there. That's the most popular kiosk we have here. Joe, Gavin, and George are no strangers to the daily grind. From an early age, their father, George Sr., put his kids to work in the family business, beer. We never had a vacation as kids. We worked in the warehouse. We swept floors. We loaded beer trucks. We did everything there was to, and we delivered six, 700 cases of beer a day. When George Sr. died suddenly in 1980, their mother, Colleen, took over the business. Well, she raised a family and ran a business. Everyone came at her after my dad's death. You know, they're, they're, is your company for sale? Uh, you, you're a woman, you can't run it. You have young boys that uh, aren't experienced in the business world, why don't you sell? She didn't, and instead put the boys in charge. We were a good team, my mom and Gavin and I were a good team, and we stuck in there, and she just was determined to make sure that the business didn't fail. So that's why we have the respect we do for her. Their keen business sense has brought them mega bucks, along with famous friends like Britney Spears and actor Mark Wahlberg. They're amazing hosts. They're so successful, but yet they're just such good guys. And it's amazing that they stay so level-headed. With the amount of bread that they got, it's ridiculous. But behind all the bling bling, Joe, Gavin, and George, along with the rest of their family, have worked very hard to build their empire. George runs the Palms, the 440 room hotel and casino they own off of the famous Vegas Strip. We wanted to create the ultimate party place. The Palms has become the place to see and be seen in Las Vegas. You know, it was our intention to go after celebrities and athletes. But there's one celebrity in particular that George has reportedly pursued more than others. Yes, the tabloids have romantically linked the pop princess to brother George, and this exclusively designed suite is rumored to have been their love nest. But don't try to get confirmation of this from George. You know, a lot of it is what, you know, what happens at the Palms stays at the Palms type of thing. So this posh playground was also the steamy site of MTV's reality series, The Real World Las Vegas. We're kind of the, the bachelor pad of, of uh, Las Vegas. In the category of pleasure, there are several options. There's this plush penthouse, or there's the bachelor's paradise. You provide the dancer, of course. It's the perfect playground for these billionaire bachelors who frequently drop in to check on their own pads. No house would be complete without the, the king's yeah, doormat. Just, There's like 83,000, that painting. I don't know what it is, but it's an original. I think this house, when I bought it, had about five bars in it. And we got three TVs, so we can watch the kings on the big one. Gavin's Vegas home might be his castle, but his prized possessions are his ponies, the ones under the hood of his Lamborghinis. This is an SV, which means super veloce. It means very fast. You keep the keys in it like that? Yeah. You know, well, to make you nervous? No. If they steal it, I'll probably just get another car. While we were there, he added this one to his stable. Well, I don't need it. It's not a question of need. This is a question of want. It's like an airplane. Do you understand when people are jealous or envious of the kind of lifestyle you lead? There's always been money in, in our family, 
but we've had to work for it. And not only that, but we've, we've taken what my father's given us and increased it a hundredfold. People are obsessed with the fact that you two are bachelors, that, you, that you're not married. So I imagine there's a lot of pressure to get hitched. Yeah. Someday it'll happen. I don't know when. Maybe <laughs> Gavin will. I don't or know. Joe, maybe. I don't know. It's a big <laughs> step. I don't know. And while mom Colleen would love a house full of grandkids, she, like all mothers, has high standards for her sons. What she's done for us, we'll never forget. So is it tough for a, for a woman to, to ingratiate themselves with you because you're always going to compare to that standard? Ooh. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anybody could do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough duty. Their hard work and genuine concern for people have made the Maloofs rich. Though they could marry a queen and spend every day living large, Joe and Gavin aren't ready to rest on their royal laurels. So what are we going to do, live on the beach <laughs> with a pretty girl? I mean, <laughs> what kind of life is that? <laughs>